Ukraine today is joined by the newly appointed Deputy Minister of Justice of Ukraine, Serhi Petukhov. Serhi, welcome to Ukraine today. Thank you. Serhi, uh, you were a lawyer by training and um, you have always been working in the corporate sector. And I understand that in the past year, you have been applying four times for a public position, for a position in the public sector. Why you were so keen to get into the public sector? Uh, it's definitely the events that occurred in the last year, the Maidan events that changed the life of many people and perception of what can you do for your country. And um, about the summer of 2014, uh, the public service became more open. There were many open competitions for various positions in the government, local administrations, um, central bodies, executive. And so I decided that that would be the best way for me to help my country in the situation that we're facing. And so I've started applying to different positions that were publicly available and open to all the candidates. So, but um, I understand that first three times you failed and these were different ministries. Um, you, you applied to the Ministry of Justice uh, recently and from the first shot you got in. Can you tell us how it happened? Okay, so I've applied, I had an internship in the Ministry of Infrastructure. I've applied to the open uh, competition for the same position in the Ministry of Energy. Um, then when I, when I failed there, um, well, actually, this deputy minister is still not selected. But in the Ministry of Justice, I've applied for the competition. It took a while, actually, to, for this to happen. In the meantime, I, uh, I was also involved as an expert uh, with the Ministry of Justice to help them with the law on lustration that was introduced last year because it went through the uh, expertise of the Venice Commission, Commission, the Council of Europe Commission for Democracy and Human Rights, where there were serious questions of whether this law violates the, the European standards of human rights. So I, among others, were prepared, was preparing a memorial to defend this law, to explain the position of the government, and, and to argue that it is according to the European standards. In the end, we were pretty successful in changing the, the view of the Commission on this law, and it has been now largely accepted as being in line with what, the, what is required by European common standards. So I guess uh, my willingness, along with this work combined, uh, persuaded the ministry that I could be the right man for the job. So you said that one of the, the, the main objectives of you applying for the public sector was to help your country. And I understand in your role as a deputy minister of justice, you'll be dealing with European integration. Can you tell what exactly you'll be doing and how this will help the country? Uh, my job is to cover all the international activities of the Ministry. The first one is European integration. That means that I'm responsible for integrating the, the part of the EU law that is within the competence of the Ministry in the Ukrainian law. And also, uh, as the Ministry is doing the legal expertise of all the draft laws and regulations of Ukraine on whether they are in accordance with the EU law. But also, apart from that, there's a big uh, amount of work uh, on international sphere, sphere where the Ministry of Justice represents the, the government. These are the cooperation with the international bodies, Council of Europe, certain human rights bodies of the United Nations, uh, Hague Conference on Private Law, and other, and other organs uh, created under the international conventions. Also, the Ministry does the legal expertise of all the treaties that are concluded by Ukraine, um, as well, we are now entrusted with the function of recovery of assets from Crimea and, and evaluating the damage uh, to the, the Ukrainian companies that lost part of the business there. And um, the other thing is that we are coordinating the activities uh, of the government in the sphere of international humanitarian law. So we are consulting the government and uh, implementing the rules of humanitarian law in the current conflicts that are occurring in the country. Anasud, can you tell me what are your main expectations from your, uh, from your new role, from your position as a deputy minister? Um, I think what I'm, what I'm trying to do is to make sure that uh, we, we do our best to change the country, to, uh, to raise our standards, to be corruption free, to to be discrimination free, to have the better understanding with our partners in the Europe and North America, and that 
the, that we better uphold the human rights because that's what the Ministry of Justice is called upon to do. So you came from the corporate backgrounds and um, into highly bureaucratic world of the Ukrainian government. Uh, what are your first impressions from this transition? Um, yeah, of course, uh, it's a bureaucracy um, and um, certain certain level of bureaucracy is a necessary part of any government. Uh, in Ukraine, the problem is that we don't have much of electronic form of, of, of government. We're pretty much still paper-based, unfortunately. So uh, when you start working at, at such position, every day in your, in your cabinet, you would see big stacks of documents waiting for you to sign. So that is a very unpleasant part of your job. But apart from that, um, I think it's, it is fine. I mean, if you know how to cooperate with all the bodies, you just have to learn it pretty much. It's, it's a bureaucracy, but once you know how it works, it is fine. Apart from the paper bureaucracy, what are your first impressions from your first day at your new job? Uh, I have a very huge cabinet and I have a couple of more rooms attached to it. And so that was something unexpected. I've seen usually that rooms are much smaller. I have a very good staff. Uh, I have, um, I've met most of the people. Um, they are, they've been there for 15, 20 years. So they know it all. They've held all the negotiations. They've negotiated all the treaties that we concluded. Um, it's, it's not as bad as I expected. I think I've met the professionals. Everybody's welcoming me. I, I didn't expect it, you know, that I would be welcomed as, as I was. So on the, on, generally, I would say I, I, I'm very positive about it. Although, as I've been told, the August is a low season, so I haven't seen the work yet. You were talking about the change. You said that you wanted to bring the change into the government. You wanted to bring the change to, to the country. Uh, but also, there are a lot of people in the government, especially those you said that you, you met some colleagues who were in, in, in the ministry for 20, 15 or 20 years. Um, I assume that some of them are um, these slow-paced bureaucrats they don't, that don't like changes, that don't like to, to, to change. And now you're their boss. Uh, how do you plan to, to work with them? I, I mean, in my ministry or in my departments, I don't see this as a problem in a sense that the work that we do does not need the, you know, the reforms that other sectors might need. In a sense, they've been, uh, they've been examining the international treaties since ever, and that is going to continue. Um, many functions will stay the same. We will try to enhance the in institutional capacity of the ministry because and some parts they're understaffed. Uh, but I would say that the people that I've met, they are quite progressive in their outlook. They are welcoming actually my appointment. They said, well, now that we have someone that has a Western education of being around the world, we can learn something from you. They don't see this as a threat. Um, I'm, my idea is that I'm, I will try to introduce newer people, new blood, younger people, probably on a volunteer basis, then on a part-time position if it's possible. And, there, and this cooperation sort of uh, should sort of change the ways without losing the track of the tradition and bureaucracy in a good sense that, that, that this whole work of the, gov of the government and the ministry was based upon. Understood. So what will be your primary um, area of responsibility? Earlier you said um, you listed a, a vast um, range of issues which your department is dealing with, but you personally, what are you responsible for? Uh, right now, the first thing is um, we are in the process of the visa liberalization talks with the EU. And the next last report is going to be issued around October. And, and the experts are coming to evaluate our preparedness um, starting from early September. So what I'm responsible for now is my part of this action plan. I will have to make sure that certain laws are introduced and reports are prepared to, uh, to, to, to show our progress. So that is a very short-term plan that I have that I'm working on right now. The other things is um, I'm, planning, I'm planning already at the Donos Conference. We get a lot of help from different international organizations and individual governments. So we will try to make it more um, organized and evaluate our needs, communicate them, and we'll try to get the help to deal with them. 
Well, we can only wish you best of luck in your new endeavors. Uh, Sri, many thanks for coming to us and talking to us. This was Volodymyr Salou for Ukraine today, together with the newly appointed Deputy Minister of Justice of Ukraine, Sri Petukhov. Thank you for watching us.